Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Enabled series, part two of two. Yesterday in part one, I showed you how to disable or enable a field based on the value in another field using just conditional formatting. But there's only a limited amount of stuff you can do with that. If you want more complex rules or complex logic, you'll have to use a little bit of VBA. So today, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first, some prerequisites. Obviously, if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one first so you know what we're doing. You'd be surprised the number of comments I get from people who jump into port, you know, part four, and they're like, I don't understand. Go watch parts one through three then if you're in part four. All right, see that big two right there, part two? That's why I make it nice and big and colorful. Don't jump in the middle. <laughs> Also, we will be using VBA. This is a developer level video. So if you've never used VBA before, don't be scared. Go watch this first. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. We're going to be using an if then statement. We're going to be using the on current event, which is what runs when you move from record to record, including the first one. We're going to be using an after update event, which is what fires when you change the value of a field. Go watch this video. We're not gonna be creating our own function, but we are gonna be creating our own subroutine, which is very similar. I know I gotta make a video for creating a sub, but this, this will tell you what you need to learn. And I'm going to use an extra condition of, we're gonna allow a manager to be able to change that field even if they're not from Florida. And so I'm just gonna use a basic user logon. We're gonna look at the user that's logged onto the computer with the uh, system environment variable username. This video explains how to do that. You can use any condition that you want, or if you got your own built-in login system, that's fine too. But go watch this if you're curious. And that should be it for today for the prerequisites. Uh, if you haven't watched any of these, go watch those first, then come on back. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. You'll find links down below in the description. All right, so here I am in the database we created yesterday. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is get rid of the conditional formatting that we put in here because the two are incompatible. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave the conditional formatting in this customer list form because the VBA method does not work in the, in the a con, a continuous form. I can't talk today. Um, because if you change the property of a field, it change all of them. So I'm gonna leave this in this form so that my gold members have that when they download the template. We're just gonna change this guy. So I'm gonna go back to format, conditional formatting, and we're just gonna delete that rule. Okay, so that puts this guy basically back to normal. Now we can see who's logged on. Let's, let me close this for a second here. We can see who's logged on by looking at the environment variable. So let's put in the main menu, when this guy opens, event, we're gonna use the onload event. Yeah, I didn't cover this in the prerequisites. I know the onload event runs when the form loads up. Here's my VBA window. Let me resize it and move some things around here. Hold on, just fix that and fix this. Okay, now in the form load event, we can say in here, status, greetings, and then environ, blah, 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 environ username. And that grabs the username from the Windows system environment. Save it, close it, close it, open it. Greetings, Amaker. Yeah, my, my Windows username is Amaker. Don't ask, it's a long story. I think I talked about it in that other video. And status is my little box here that just writes stuff to this box instead of having to use message box all the time. I got a separate video for that. I'll put a link down below if you're curious. So anyways, we can look at this and determine if this person can override the settings that I got in here. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we're gonna use a couple of events to control when this thing gets enabled or disabled. All right, the first event we'd use would be the after update event for the state field. So when the user changes the state, it'll update whether this is enabled or disabled, okay? The second place we'd have to put it is up here in the after update event, because the after update event runs when you move from record to record, including the first one, when the form loads. All right, but let's start here in the after update for state. So go to state, go to events, go to after update, hit the dot, dot, dot button, and that puts you in here. What are we gonna do in here? Well, we're gonna type in check state. What's check state? Well, we gotta write it. We're gonna make our own subroutine, private sub, What's the difference between a sub and a function? They're both procedures. A sub does not return a value, a function does. That's the difference, okay? Private sub, check, state. And all this guy is gonna do is determine whether or not that credit limit is enabled. 
So what are the conditions for the credit limit being enabled? Well, the state's gotta be Florida and we're gonna check the user. So we'll say if state equals Florida or the environment of username is equal to me, Amaker, sorry, Amaker, then credit limit, I can't type today, credit limit dot enabled equals true. Otherwise, credit limit dot enabled equals false. Do we have to check that null condition? No, because if it's null, it's not gonna be equal to Florida, right? So if either one of these conditions are true, then that field will be enabled. All right, debug compile once in a while. Come out here, close it, save it, open it. All right, that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Wait, they're all good. Okay, that's because user Amicron is logged on, right? All right, so let's close that. Let's go back to our editor. Let me change this to something that I'm not. All right, save it, close it, close it, open it. Okay, Florida's good. I oh, well, oh, oh, we're not good. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, guess what? I only put that in one spot, right? I only put that in the after update event. We got to also put it where? In the form current event. Oh, that's why it's not running as we move from record to record. See, I make these mistakes in, intentionally to teach you guys sometimes, right? All right, so go to the on current event, which is you click on the form properties, event, on current, and now we don't have duplicate code in our database, right? We never do that. We put in here, check state and now that will run the same code down below all right save it debug compile good enough come down here close it close it open it and oh look at that there we go iowa was blocked florida's good blocked see the null conditions block because it's not florida right good 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 all right everybody's good let's test changing it let's go over to this iowa one here and change it to florida and now it's unlocked Okay. Now, one thing you might want to prevent people from doing is changing it to Florida, putting a credit limit in, and then changing it back to whatever it was before. Now there's a credit limit in there and it's locked again. So what you might want to do is come in here and say in the after update event, okay, here's where you could put a specific condition. If state is not Florida, then credit limit equals zero. Well, you'd also want to check the environment variable too. So if the state is not Florida and this is not true and that's not true. So if both of those conditions are not true, then set the credit limit back to zero. All right, so if I come in here and do that trick, right? And then make it Texas, burp, it puts it back to zero. See, and obviously I'm just using this as the real simple user logon mechanism. You could put whatever logic you want in here, you know, make an is manager function or whatever you've got going on. I'm just showing you the simplest way you can check to see what users in the database. And of course, as I say in the environment uh, video, this can be spoofed. So someone can easily change this if they know how to use DOS commands. If you wanna set up real security for your Microsoft Access database, check out my security seminar. I show you how to set up user and group accounts, manage the workflow of your database, control who's got access to what objects, what forms, what reports, lots more. Check it out. There's the link. Now, one more thing. Again, I mentioned it before. This type of thing will not work on a continuous form because if you change the properties of a control, it changes all of them. There are some tricks you can play. For example, in this video, I show you how you can hide a field in a continuous form. You could do something similar with this, but it's not exactly the same, but you can eh, check this out and see. It's a, it's a trick, but it works. But aside from that, that should give you a pretty good idea how to do what you need to do. So that's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, 
check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.